Welcome back everyone. This is a continuation of a screencast I just did on how to solve for formula units and these are just a couple more examples of how to go about doing that. I've got instructions down here. If any of this doesn't make sense I would say please take a look at my previous screencast dealing with how to do this. So I've got a link posted right now and so let's go ahead and get started. If you look at a periodic table Aluminum is going to have three valence electrons, so we could go ahead and write that down. Three valence electrons. Sulfur is going to have six. And so at first glance, it's not immediately clear what the ratio is going to be. But our next step, after we've done our first step, is to find the charge for each of the two types of ions involved. So aluminum, let's think about it. If we lose three negative things, the equivalent of that is plus three. Or one way, another way to think of this is to say if this ion now loses these three electrons, that means it has an overall positive three charge because it has three more protons than electrons. Similarly here, if this sulfur atom becomes stable, it's going to gain two more electrons, and so it's going to have a two minus charge. Let me go ahead and write the aluminum three plus charge. All right, so what I asked you to do earlier, once you find the charge, you're going to write out the multiples of these charges. So aluminum with a three plus charge, multiples of three are going to be three, six, nine, and 12. For sulfur with a two minus or a minus two charge, multiples of that are going to be two, four, six, and so on. All right, then our next step is going to be to find the least common multiple between these. Least common multiple here is going to be 6. We're going to try to figure out how many of each of these ions we need to come up with a stable formula unit. This is going to end up being a positive 6 charge. This is going to end up being a negative 6 charge. And those are going to cancel each other out and make a neutral formula unit. And so we would need 1, 2 of these ions to be able to do that. We would need 1, 2, three of these ions to be able to do that. And so our overall formula unit for this Al2S3. And we're going to write the atom on the left hand side of the periodic table first and the type of atom on the right hand side of the periodic table second. And so this would be called aluminum sulfide. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Okay, and so our last example we're going to be looking at potassium is going to have one valence electron, phosphate's going to have five valence electrons. So let's think about what would it take for these atoms to become stable. This potassium atom is going to lose that outermost electron and so if it loses a negative thing that's equivalent to having a positive thing overall or you could say in terms of math a double negative makes a positive or you could say it now has one more proton since it's lost one electron, it now has one more proton than electrons, and so it's going to have an overall charge of plus one. So I'm going to go ahead and write that right here. If phosphorus gains three electrons, that's a lot easier. If it gains three electrons, it's going to have an overall charge of three minus. And so we could go ahead and write out multiples of these, multiple of just one. There's an implied one right there with a plus. And so multiples of one, it's a little tricky in a very simplistic way. It's actually going to be one, two, and three. That's like saying one multiplied by one, one multiplied by two, and so on. You get the idea. And so the second example is going to be phosphorus. That's going to be three minus right here. Multiples of that are going to be three, six, nine, twelve, so on. All right, so there we go. We've got steps one, two, and three down. So let's go ahead and check those off. Let's think about our least common multiple here. Least common multiple is going to be three. And now I want to ask you, after we find the least common multiple, let's ask ourselves how many of each of these ions are we going to need to make a stable neutral, that's key, neutral repeating formula unit. And so it has to be neutral. What that means is our overall positive charges have to balance out the overall negative charges for this to form a stable neutral repeating formula unit. And so that means that we're going to have one, two, three of these types of ions and we're going to need only one of these types of ions because for every potassium ion it has a charge of plus one. For every phosphorus ion it's going to have a charge of minus three. So the way we're going to write that is going to be K3P potassium phosphide is going to be the name of this repeating formula unit right here.
So those conclude our two examples, two extra examples in this series. And so thank you for listening. If you liked it, please like this. And as always, please subscribe. Thank you.